a very troubling development. Those are not the type of words one wants to hear in the battle between the United States and Russia for outer space. But those were the exact words of Yelim Pablit, the U.S. Assistant Secretary for Arms Control, as stated in a speech she gave at the Conference of Disarmament in Geneva, Switzerland, on August 14, 2018. The reason for Pablit's ominous statement was simple. A Russian satellite seemed to be orbiting in space with an unknown purpose and had been repeatedly observed acting strangely. It had been troubling U.S. defense officials since it had been brought to their attention earlier that summer. Pavlit told the assembled conference that she believed the Russians had covertly launched the space object the previous October under the auspices of it being a space apparatus inspector. Yet Pavlit contended that the space object appeared to be something else entirely. Potentially, the U.S. believed it to be something dangerous and unprecedented in the field. It was, again, in the ominous words of Pavlit, a very troubling development. Pavlit explained the American assertion regarding this Russian spacecraft thus, quote, its behavior on orbit was inconsistent with anything seen before from on-orbit inspection or space situational awareness capabilities, including other Russian inspection satellite activities. To add to the mystery, Pavlit also reported that Russia's intentions with respect to the satellite were unclear. Not surprising was the reaction from Russia. Alexander Deneko, a senior Russian diplomat present at Pavlit's speech, flatly dismissed the accusations that this secretive space object represented anything malicious. He called her remarks slanderous and based on suspicions. Interestingly, this Russian did not deny the existence of the object outright. In the wake of Pavlit's address, researchers went to work looking for records of any launches in October 2017 that would have been consistent with the type of satellite object she had described. At first, no one was able to identify the mysterious craft, or any launches in the time frame that possibly matched its description. However, a likely culprit did eventually emerge, the Cosmos 2521, or what became known as the Sputnik Inspector. What likely caused the confusion is that the Cosmos 2521 did not have a proper launch at all. Instead, it deployed from a holding cell on its parent satellite, the Cosmos 2519, which itself had launched on June 23, 2017, its function undisclosed. This unexpected component, the subsatellite 2521, was observed by U.S. officials exhibiting strange behavior. After being deployed from the larger mothership satellite on August 23rd, the 2521 began to orbit, then alter its orbit, then reverse it again. It was demonstrating what is referred to as live maneuverability, that is, as if it were being controlled to come as close as possible to the 2519 without creating a collision. Cosmos 2521 spent August and September in close proximity to its parent satellite, the 2519. Then, in the last days of October, another surprise. A third nesting doll satellite emerged from the Cosmos 2519, this one smaller than the previous two. This was the Cosmos 2523, which Russia announced in vague terms as a satellite inspector. It was the third sub-satellite that Pavlit had likely been referring to as having been launched in October 2017. It was clear there were now three separate Russian satellites working in tandem together towards some unknown goal or purpose. To build satellites to function together is not in itself unusual, but the added efficiency of deploying the sub-satellites once in orbit was an impressive and, it should be noted, very unusual feat. It was that feat which alerted defense officials in the U.S. to the possibility that there may be more to their existence than simply acting as satellite inspectors. The Russian space program remained tight-lipped about their end goals with their nesting doll satellites. The Russian Ministry of Defense's official response when questioned about the Sputnik inspector's purpose was merely to state that it was being used for examining the condition of a Russian satellite. It further noted that in the longer term, the device would be used as a space platform capable of carrying different payloads. That explanation might have sounded plausible enough, if taken at face value, that is. Furthermore, no mention was made of any aggressive functionality that would have raised concerns among U.S. officers, nor did it sound like anything the U.S. space program was not itself already doing. In fact, on August 9, 2018, just weeks before a public speech, the U.S. Department of Defense had released a report outlining the need for a military branch that patrols and monitors hostile activities in space. This quickly became known as a Space Force. 
The American report came largely in response to internal worries over the advancements made in both the Chinese and Russian space programs, both of which are considered highly secretive and motivated operations by those countries. The same American report warned that, although U.S. space systems have historically maintained a technological advantage over those of potential adversaries, those potential adversaries are now actively developing ways to deny our use of space in a crisis. So what was it about the 2521 Sputnik inspector that seemed so threatening to the United States? The Soviet Union has a long and fairly successful history of developing cutting-edge technology, allowing them to monitor or even meddle in U.S. affairs, a history of high-tech espionage which traces back to the early days of the Cold War. Could Russia now be doing the same in light of what the former USSR was capable of? The United States certainly thinks so. In April of 2018, the Center for Strategic and International Studies, CSIS, released a Space Threat Assessment Report, which detailed Russia's competing space force and anti-satellite technology as a significant threat to U.S. security. Those observers and researchers who had followed the three space objects in their movements in 2017 noted that the TRIA was exhibiting behaviors that could be associated with that of a sophisticated anti-satellite weapon designed to take out or destroy the capabilities of enemy satellites. This would certainly explain the unease of the Americans. It would no doubt be rather obviously careless to blast a rival satellite to smithereens and therefore alert the rival space force, not to mention filling the surrounding space with thousands of pieces of dangerous debris. Instead, an advanced anti-satellite weapon could compromise another nation's equipment in more sinister ways. For example, they could nudge them out of orbit, attach surveillance equipment, or even possibly reprogram larger satellites to take control of them. If in fact this was the hidden purpose of Russia's alleged satellite inspector, then Poblit's concerns appear to have been well-founded. The United States currently has hundreds of commercial and government satellites in orbit, all of which are vital for maintaining the country's economy, infrastructure, and civic culture. These U.S.-controlled satellites enable cellular data, broadcast television, credit card authorization, and many other forms of telecommunication. Perhaps most vitally, the U.S. military uses satellites for navigation and targeting systems, which, if wiped out, could prove catastrophic to any military counter-efforts were a global conflict requiring military action to arise. This much is very clear. Any large-scale effort to disarm or reprogram U.S. satellites could prove catastrophic to the country. Steve Lambakis, an international affairs analyst with a focus on space, called the U.S.'s space systems among the most fragile and vulnerable assets operated by the U.S. military. A new story from News Corp Australia reporting on the discovery of the 2521 and 2523 sub-satellites and reacting to public speech wrote that the small, agile device has the potential to bring the world's economy to its knees. For now, we still do not know the full range of abilities of the Sputnik inspector, but a third-party report compiled by the Secure World Foundation certainly offered a leading clue. The report found that Russia had invested heavily in what is known as Rendezvous and Proximity Operations, or RPO. RPO, fundamentally, is the ability to have an object maneuver in tight quarters around another, larger space object, just as the Cosmos 2523 had been observed doing around the larger Cosmos 2521. The dexterity of such an object could be used to covertly dismantle or compromise another country's satellite, just as U.S. officials have feared. But astronomers outside the U.S. government have their own takes on this newest fleet of Cosmos satellites and their utility. Jonathan McDowell, an astrophysicist at Harvard, wrote that the system is certainly puzzling and even unusual. However, he cautioned that abnormal seems a bit strong, as the U.S. has flown its own classified satellites, which have performed unexplained orbit changes, proximity operations, and sub-satellite deployments. By McDowell's estimation, the Russians were not covering any territory that NASA had not already dabbled in. He guessed that the Russians are checking out the bus and its capabilities to deliver multiple sub-satellites to different orbits, and that certainly seems as plausible as any more malicious intentions. As for the satellites themselves, they have remained dormant. The last known activity from the nesting doll satellites came on July 20th, 2018, when Cosmos 2521 was recorded as lowering its orbit. As they say, Watch this space.